Hey, how are you doing today? Uh, so today, uh, you see the finished document on the screen. We're, we're going to use our time today to build this, uh, but I wanted to show you where we were going before we got started. So really all we're doing is we're doing two cascading list boxes to use a, I guess, a database or a known table of material properties and assign those uh, material properties uh, to whatever material we're using in the given problem. So basically we've got to set up, we've got to set up inside a region. So I'll be able to copy and paste this whole piece to whatever worksheet I want to use it in. So in the first box, we break down by category the different materials. And this is just taken from a particular reference that we use for some of our problems. And the second box populates itself with the various selections from within that category. And then depending on what you choose here, it returns the material properties that we're going to use for the problem. So that's what we're going to do. It's fairly straightforward. The first box is really easy. The second box is not that difficult, but it just gets a little bit longer because it contains all of our material properties. And then this section out here, we're just going to assign it units because it doesn't have any units coming out of the, uh, the script. Uh, and then we're good to go and use it in our worksheet. So with that, uh, let's get started. So here we are, uh, we're ready to start. And so that first box, so we're gonna go up to our input output over to advanced. We're gonna add a list box. And so this first list box, what we're gonna do is we're going to basically populate it based on the categories that we've decided. And then based on those categories, we're, we're gonna return the script of whatever we choose which we'll then use in our second box. So this one should be pretty uh, straightforward, pretty quick. So we're going to give it a material category. We'll just give it a, a variable, put it over here. And we don't have any inputs going into the script. So we're good to go. And we go into our edit. Okay, so this is what you get when you open it up. Uh, we have our standard default uh, script here. So this is where we're going to have to add the material or the categories that we're going to use. And so uh, the first one was aluminum alloys. And then, you know, let's just get rid of two and three. We'll just copy this, paste it, paste it a handful of times and I'm going to type in the other categories. Okay, so we've got our uh, categories in and right down here, basically it's just selecting by default the first one. So if you, there's one you use all the time, maybe put it first, just save you from uh, making a selection. And now all we need to do is go down to the outputs and make sure we output the current selection uh, as a script. So to do that, we're down here in the execute section. We have our outputs. This is what uh, comes with it. So this is not what we're going to do. So we get rid of that. Outputs value equals, and in this case, it's the list box. Get the text from the current selection. And I think I've got the right brackets and we need to close that. And let's see what we, how we did. So we didn't get any syntax errors. So we make that big enough to, to fill the screen and let's just check our value. Okay, so that was pretty straightforward. We got our first box working pretty quick. So let's get rid of this. And we can hide the left side here. We don't need to see that. We know it's equal to our material. And we'll just move that over. So now we're ready for our second box. So once again, input output over to advanced, create a list box. And in this case, it gets a little bit more complicated. And so what we need to do is we need to set this up to receive back the values of the material properties. So we're gonna need a matrix here. So go over to matrices and 
we have seven properties that we've programmed in. And so we create our matrix and we just start putting them in. So the first one is going to be our density. So that's a row. So control G to turn that into the Greek variable. And then we had our Young's modulus and we had our shear modulus. And then we had our yield stress, so sigma. And our ultimate stress. And new. Poisson's ratio. And finally, coefficient of thermal expansion. And we should be good. Now, the other thing we need to do is we need to pass into the box the script that we got from the first box, right? So the selection of one will affect the outcome of the other. So we'll do that here. Oh, yes. Okay. Add inputs. So up here we have the input, and that was material. So that's the output from the first box. And with that, we're ready to get into our script. Okay, uh, so in this case, uh, we're not actually going to uh, directly populate the box. What we're going to do is we're going to have a uh, series of uh, else ifs uh, so that depending on what is coming in as a script onto the material variable, we'll have a variety of outputs uh, coming back. So up into our initialization. So let me just make some space. I'm going to make some space here. And this is where we're going to initialize. And we'll do that with an if. And now we have to match to the scripts, the potential scripts that we could have coming in. So beware of the spelling mistake, like that. So if that's true, then what we have to do is we have to give it or populate the box based on the specific materials in that category. So we'll just do an add string. And in this case, 20. and we have one more. So, and then we close that one. And now we're ready for our first else if. case if the inputs zero value and we go on to the next one in which case in this case it's cast iron alloys again watch the spelling mistakes and Close that, open that. And we're going to repeat that for the six categories that we have here and input the various values. So let me just get ahead and do that so we can save a little bit of time. Okay, there, I've got them all put in. Hopefully I didn't make any spelling mistakes and everything's going to work. You can see for each of the categories, I've list listed the different materials. Uh, so it will populate the list box based on the category selected. So now we get we're, we're done the inputs. Okay, so it's going to still default because we have that set up here to the current selection of zero. But now we go down to the execution set. Let me just roll down there and make ourselves some space, get rid of that output. That's not what we're going to use. And so what we have to do now is depending on what is chosen in the list box itself is give back the material properties uh, to those things. So let me just set that up. So first thing we want to do is we'll define our variables. So 
So we'll start with the list box itself. Current selection. And then our different material properties. So we'll start, and what, I'm just gonna give them all a value of zero to start with. Okay, so we've got that. And so now all we have to do is based on whatever's chosen, we'll uh, give values to those and then output them back to, uh, to the output. So to do that, we're gonna use a switch based on the text. Oh, that's a little t text. And for each one, I'll do the, the first one for sure. So now what we have to do is we have to do this for each of the specific materials that could be chosen. So not by category necessarily. Uh, and so we have a case and we give it a, has to match one of the selections. So we'll start with T6. And now we're going to define these and we're going to pull these from our table. Now note that the units are not carried in or, or defined, but I am going to add a comment just so that we know what the units are later on, or if somebody else is looking at this later on and they're unsure. Okay, we got them all in. Now we just give it a break and semicolon, and then we start building up the next case. We have to have a single case for each of the possible materials. So let me just jump ahead and get those in there. Okay, that was a little bit painful, but we got that done. And so now that all of those variables are defined, all we have to do is output them. And so that will line up the various outputs, number and zero uh, and on to the variables that we set up when we established our list box. So let's get that done. And we'll just set that up here. So again, outputs, we'll start with zero. And we'll establish, set the value equal to, and the first one would be row. And then we're just gonna repeat that for each of the other ones. So let me do some copy and pasting and change the variables. So if we remember the order, order that we did them in, we had E, G, Sigma Y, Sigma U, Nu, and Alpha. And get rid of the extra space. That's good. And I think we should be ready. So let's give that a try. Didn't get any errors. Okay, I'm just trying to figure out why we weren't getting any values. And it's because I've just put this up too high. So all of this. should be in the initialization section or the start. Yeah, there we go. Just had to get that in the right spot. Sorry about the mislead there. And so let's see, let's hide that. We'll input, output, hide our left side. We don't need to see that. Get that lined up there. So depending, uh, let me see, we had steel alloys was the largest, so we can get our box sized. Oh, that's not right. Okay, so we're just going to list box reset content 
make it blank and that should be what we need so now there we go it resets it doesn't continue to add to it so we can size that make sure we don't have anything too long okay that one's a little too long get that there okay high left side there we go so we're doing that and you see the value for row is changing so that's great so all we have to do now is to assign the units to the particular values coming out so i'm gonna get started with that so we'll start with the text And for example, we'll start, we'll do row, and that's equal to row, control G multiplied by its units. So that was grams times 10 to the six per meter cubed. Now, the only problem is our G is showing up as the G uh, constant as compared to a unit. Let's see if I can just make that equal to a unit. So I'm going to go to math, label, instead of a constant, make it a unit. And let's see how we're doing. So our units aren't working out here. So I ran into this problem before because I've reset my base units to kilograms. I've in the past uh, had to define this to be equal to kilograms divided by 10 to the third and then turn this into a, a unit. There we go, kilograms per meter cubed, which is what you would expect for density. So we don't need these here. So I'm just going to uh, type in the other ones and I'll put in our reference and I'll show you how I tidy this up and then we're ready to uh, call this one quits. Okay, so I've uh, put in or assigned units to each of the variables coming out and then I've just done a summary output outside of the collapsible section. So now I can just copy this whole piece into any particular worksheet and we're going to be able to call upon those material uh, properties. Uh, so that's pretty much what I would do, and I would call that quits. It's a lot of typing, but the actual process is fairly straightforward. So hopefully I've been able to edit out uh, most of the wasted time in, in typing and setting up the sheets and uh, kept this to something that is uh, functional. So uh, hopefully that was useful to you. I think once you set it up once, you just copy and paste and uh, modify whatever the cascading list box is uh, for subsequent uses. So I uh, hope you enjoyed that and we'll see you in the next one.